Hi, in this video, we will see how to work with AWS Apache PySpark ETL job using third party libraries and AWS data catalog. So, here we will have the third party libraries of Python kept in the you know the Amazon S3 bucket, which will be referenced in the Spark ETL job. Similarly, we also reference the AWS Glue data catalog. And finally, we will see that you know, how does that uh, you know ETL PySpark job helps us to do the required data analytics on that data. So this is the video where we, you know you can explore more about how to use the third party Python libraries in the PySpark job. Now I am in my AWS account currently and we are in the AWS Glue services of Oregon region. I have a notebook file which I am going to upload now to create the PySpark job here. And here we will learn more about how to use the third party libraries in the PySpark job. So let me choose the file now and I'm going to upload that file basically. So I have the file here in the in my document. So let me go to that particular folder. And from where you know we actually import the required files here. That is the notebook file. So don't no need to worry. So I'm going to share this file in the video's description from where you can find it actually. So so this is the Python notebook file which I'm going to import now into the ETL job here. And uh, as soon as you import that file, so it should see there is a green mark here, which means that you know you have imported the uh, correct file. Then you need to choose the right IAM role, which has the proper access um, to the required services. Here we are using AWS S3 bucket, so it should have S3 bucket access plus it, it should have a full access on the AWS Glue services. And then you click on a create notebook. So basically the creation of notebook session, it will take certain time. What we do is, you know, we're going to go on a hold till that time this particular notebook gets uploaded and then we come back. So after waiting for almost close to one minute, the glue notebook got loaded into this particular, you know, um, notebook ETL job and uh, we can now go down and try to execute those, you know, the segment of code basically. So as you see here, so there are the, uh, you know, the segment of piece of code that you need to keep running here. And there are the proper guidance are been given here, so which you can go through. So our first file, if you see here, so the first, the segment of code or basically piece of code that you need to execute here is the first one that is, so here extract the PY file from the bucket. So here I, we need to replace this bucket value with the, you know, the targeted bucket, which I have already copied. So this is my S3 bucket, which I have, uh, you know, have in my accounts. In this one, I have the library pack, you know, so the, something like this is the library uh, folders. So don't worry, I'm going to share this notebook file plus this, you know, uh, pycountryconvert.gif file, which is nothing but a third party library for PySpark job, which I will be sharing in this, uh, you know, video's description. So you can find the link from there and try to download those files and use it from your side. Yeah. All right. So with that note, you know, what I do is I'm going to execute the first line of code or basically segment of code. So how you can understand is, as I said in the previous video, so this the the segment of code which is got selected will be annotated by a vertical blue line as you see that so this which means that you know it is already selected now we have replaced the bucket value with this our bucket now i'm going to go to the top button so there is a button called run the selected cells and the advances okay so i'm going to click on that so what happens is basically it will be you know loaded in the sense it will get loaded that basically all right and the next one, so we go go to the uh, the next file that is nothing but this is the file where actually the third party PySpark Python library gets in, you know, getting imported. So before you run this uh, segment of code or piece of code, what you do is you need to replace that with your bucket where you have kept the, um, you know, where you have kept the other files. Right? So here, one is to load the library which is done here. The next one is you are going to consume that library in the sense use that library in the code right so that is what it happens if i can walk you through this course quickly so here we are actually from the pyspark sql function you are actually importing udf column right and then from the sql types you are you know importing integrate types string types from pyspark you are actually importing the spark context uh, and then the Sp Sp you know pyspark sql you are importing the sql context and then here from the dates we are again importing the you know the date time Right, and this is the way you actually, you know, importing the custom PySpark modules or basically custom third party Python modules here. So that is nothing but so we have some something called pycountry underscore convert, and that has these many functions. You see that it has these many functions getting loaded here, and then we are just setting a variable that is our S3 bucket, 
and that s3 bucket is nothing but you know that is the name of the bucket which is used in the down the line which actually creates a data frame here okay so if everything is as expected let's see that if whether this works so i'm going to click on that and if you see that there is a option called waiting for bo to three session to get completed so once that session gets completed you know you see you must see that there is an option called star mark you see that here there is an option called uh, you know in the in the square basis you have a little star getting shown which means that this particular segment of code is getting executed so you need to wait that until that get you know completed as you see here the session has been created and this piece of code is executed right how did you conclude that in the in the output you see that it is being created right so that's the reason the piece of code is executed now we can go to the next segment of code to execute in this you know the notebook here so the next question is basically you know the next piece of code that we're going to execute is nothing but a function and the function that is being imported here right so if you see here so that is get country code so this is the something like a custom basically this is a custom python function but that python function is using uh, uh, you know the 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 third party libraries function. The third party libraries function is nothing but convert country name to to country alpha two, right? Something here. So if I go here, so country to alpha two. You see that co convert country name to country alpha two, right? So that is the function this custom Python function is been using. So if I show you this code, this is a piece of code, right? And then what happens? You know this has been stored in a particular variable. Let's see what it happens basically. So I'm going to execute that a segment of code which got completed successfully. Now what you can do is you know basically you can now try to see if it is really did the job in the sense whether the third party Python library got imported and now it is working as expected in this PySpark notebook job. So I'm going to run the second piece that is nothing but the next piece of code which actually shows the you know the schemas. So we here you go right. So first one is you know you are creating the data frame. With using df with the column that is country code underscore two, and then you are using the udf get country code. This is basically uh, you know the the native functions. If I go here, right? What did we do is we have used this function, and then we try to run that function from this particular you know from this particular segment, and then you know so this is where you are actually creating the df, right? And uh, with using that df, you know what you are doing is you know you are actually creating the printing the schema. And the schema got loaded. If you see here, we have the country code underscore two got automatically in the sense it it got you know in that data frame it actually created a schema that is a custom schema called country code underscore two, right? And then right so that is what and then we were able to print that particular schema and that is got executed here, right? So what does that mean is basically you know so with even with using the third party python libraries of pyspark you know you can use that into the into this building the etl job with using the notebook let's go to the next piece of code that is nothing but just printing the top 10 rows of the data frame let me run that code and let's see that if it prints the result basically you see that i have executed that basically so if you see here just now let me run it here you go right so it got executed um so it took a time that is a couple of seconds but it actually printed the result so what is that custom data that i have added to this particular data frame is nothing but you know the custom country code right so here you have a azerbaijan these are all the country names and the respective code is been added here so what does that mean is basically you know while building very complex pyspark etl job you can build your own custom pyspark third party libraries and that third party libraries can be imported while you are constructing the etl job with using aws glue etl notebook jobs right and then we go next one that is nothing but using the data catalog so using the data catalog in the sense if i open the aws glue services and we go to the data catalog we have a table for there actually so in that one what we do is i'm going to show you that there is a table so i'm going to go to that to the uh, uh, to the you know the table so if you go to the data catalog here, let me go to the data catalog. So this is our database. If you click on the database, so I have a custom database called console glue workshop. Underneath that, we have a table console CSV. Right underneath the custom, you know, custom CSV, basically console CSV, we have these many data tables. Okay. Now if I go to the tables, you see that we have the table called console CSV in indeed basically. Now what we do is you know we're gonna we're gonna use that basically, we're gonna use that data with using this 
um, you know, with using this uh, data catalog format here. So basically what we are doing is, so whatever I have shown you till now is a separate piece of code underneath this third party library of the video. The next one is basically using the data catalog. This is nothing but, you know, so if you want to interact with the AWS Glue data catalog tables, which is in the third party. So that is also possible here with using the ATL job, yeah? with using this PySpark uh, ATL job. Yeah? So let's see, you know, what is the thing that is happening here? That is nothing but using the glue context. You are using the glue context in the sense, importing the glue context again, and then, you know, creating the glue context. With using the glue context, you are actually creating the dynamic frame from the catalog. So dynamic frame has been printed here. So re remember that. So this segment of code is doing nothing but, you know, with using the PySpark, um, you know, you are actually interacting with the AWS glue catalog tables. And then, you know, you are getting the schema and then print, you know, basically working with that data set. So we have a AWS data catalog tables or data, you know, data catalog data. Now with using the PySpark job, you are actually interacting with that, getting the data, reading the schema and, and doing all those possible functionalities that you can do on that data catalog. So let's do that. Let's see here. So let me run this segment of code right now. So I have run that. So what happens is basically it actually creates a context and then finally prints the schema. So here, if you see that, you know, we got a schema of my table called console.csv. If I go to that particular console.csv, you can also see the schema here. It contains uh, 14 schema, starts with column lib, UID, uh, country, total profit. Let's see if we can see those column names here. Here you go, right? So we have a UID, country, blah, blah, profit, right? So basically, you know, it, it is able to read the data from the data catalog tables as well, right? So we can do few more two tasks on that data set or data frame. So here what we are doing is basically getting the dynamic uh, data frames and uh, that is basically top, you know, top uh, 10 rows. So I have executed this piece of code, uh, which I, let's you know, how does that it actually gives the output. So here it has extracted the top 10 records in the sense, this uh, table has a data now. Now what did I do is basically with using the, you know, the notebook job, we extracted or basically we constructed a data frame and with using the data frame, we actually using the function called show top 10 records. And then that is what it is, you know, returning us basically. Yeah. All right. So then next one is basically uh, stop the current session. Yeah. This is basically, uh, you know, the final uh, step of the, uh, you know, video. So here, what did I show is, you know, so basically I showed you that, you know, with using the custom third party PySpark. Uh, you know, the libraries, you can actually build your own custom ETL jobs with using the notebooks. All right. So with that note, you know, finally, uh, thank you very much for watching my video. Kind request, please do subscribe my channel. That would really encourage me a lot. With that note, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot and see you in the next video.